Even after she leaves office, the controversy just keeps on following former James Island Mayor Mary Clark. The Dow's coming your way next on The Savage Report. Hello everyone and welcome to The Savage Report. I'm News 2's Brendan Clark, filling in for Andy. The Savage Report investigation last spring into the town of James Island helped bring to light many of the problems inside James Island Town Hall. Now, months later, even with controversial Mayor Mary Clark out of office, that controversy continues. The town's new mayor and council members recently found Clark wrote five $1,000 checks to the Sea Islands Chamber of Commerce. That doesn't sound incredibly alarming until you hear that. The nonprofit is a brand new organization started this summer and that Mary Clark's daughter, Karen Clark Thompson, is an executive director. The checks were all written within weeks of Mary Clark leaving office. Remember, last spring when Clark's son was awarded $75,000 worth of contracts to handle the town's website and GIS mapping. Joining us now is James Island Messenger reporter Charlie Morrison, who broke this and other stories in his coverage of the town. Charlie, how did this all come to light, beginning with the son and now the daughter? Well, uh, you know, the son was awarded a contract uh, that was voted on by members of council. So that was out in the public eye. Um, three members of council, including Mayor Clark herself, decided that it was appropriate to give her son that contract, and thus he got the contract. With regards to this latest development, uh, basically the information didn't come out until the new mayor of James Island, town mayor Bill Woolsey, took office and finally got the reins on the town's financials. He was prevented from actually getting a hold of those financials and discussing them in the public eye by the previous administration. So only in the last couple of weeks has it emerged that there was some, you know, some debatable spending going on at the uh, end of Mayor Clark's tenure. Uh, one of the big questions is, is why were there five checks, each written for $1,000 each? Seems a little bit strange. It does seem strange, Brendan. Uh, basically, the mayor, as it stood in Mayor Clark's time, did have the discretionary power to spend up to $1,000 at one time without council oversight. So it does raise some alarms and raise some eyebrows that perhaps this was trying to be done under the cover of night, so to speak. Uh, that she did write five individual $1,000 checks and not a $5,000 check that would have had to be uh, receive oversight from council is a little fishy. Is it against the law? Uh, I don't think it's against the law, Brennan. Uh, I, I think it's at best unethical. Um, you know, I, in addition to some other things that went on, it went on in the last few weeks of her tenure, this is, this is something that definitely raised the eyebrows. So what is the new mayor, Bill Woolsey, and council doing about this, if anything? Well, on one hand, they're, they're trying to move on and move forward and take the town forward. On the other hand, uh, Mr. Woolsey, Mayor Woolsey, is actually trying to put together a budget for this town, uh, given that the town didn't have a working budget at the end of Clark's tenure. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what they can and will do about it, but it, it's clear that it's, it, it's, a, it's a bit annoying at best. You said a minute ago you're not sure if it was against law, but is there any talk of calling in police, law enforcement of any kind to handle this? Brendan, I haven't heard any talk about that. Um, I think that's pushing it a little too far. I think this town wants to move on. I think this town wants to move forward. Uh, I think they want to get down to the business of governing and uh, not dealing with the previous administration's uh, acts. All right, Clark wouldn't join us on the air, but told us just before the program that, quote, Heavens no, I didn't do anything illegal. She added that the new leaders need to get to the business of governing the town and leave me out of it. Hmm. Is that possible to do? You know, I, she's been there for, for long enough, Brennan. I don't think it is possible just to move on and make a clean break like that, especially when the town's financial state was in such disarray as she left office. The new mayor and council have a big job on their hands of getting this town's finances squared away in addition to providing all the services that some feel weren't provided in the end of her tenure. So I, I don't think you can really, you know, move forward without looking back a little bit. All right, so we got the, we got the son, we got the daughter. Any other questionable spending from Clark's final weeks? Yeah, unfortunately there is. Uh, the mayor actually prepaid, I'm not sure if it was the mayor itself, but the mayor's administration prepaid for a number of services, including building rent, telephone, electricity, uh, stormwater. Uh, it makes you wonder what was going on when all those services were prepaid in advance as opposed to being paid on a month-to-month -month basis as you would think they would be. And this was uh, prepaid to the, the mayor's son, is that correct? 
Yeah, he actually, uh, you know, he was contracted to do the GIS mapping work and along with the website design. And unfortunately, he's only completed about 43%, I believe Mayor Woolsey quoted, uh, of the GIS mapping. You know, the website, if you go to the website, it, it's certainly not a uh, jaw-dropping website, to put anything lightly. And this money was funneled through the company of town consultant Roy DeHaven. What happened uh, with that situation? There's a lot of interme intermediaries going on here, and it's, it's tough to get to the bottom of it, to be honest with you. Um, I've tried very hard, and it's difficult, mm -hmm. but uh, there certainly are some... Uh, some intermediary companies that that is receiving money and then dispersing it so it's difficult to actually put your finger on who the money is going to and where exactly it's going a lot of the time so much for transparency on that one back to the 5,000 to join a chamber of commerce as we understand town joins other chambers but really not five thousand dollars as little as 500 a year what does the town of james island get for five thousand dollars do we know uh, we don't know. We don't know right now. Uh, it's hard to imagine they're going to get the requisite services and benefit uh, that $5,000 you'd think would get. Uh, it's a new organization, this Chamber of Commerce, really just started this summer. Um, as you said, Brendan, uh, Mayor Clark's, uh, former Mayor Clark's daughter, Karen Clark Thompson, is uh, on the executive board there. Have you talked to the daughter? I have. I have. Uh, not on the record, unfortunately. Okay, so she doesn't want to say anything on record. Mary Clark does not want to say much at all. Heavens no, saying I didn't do anything illegal. But the problem is, I think that we've talked about before, is the situation that uh, she, Mary Clark wants the new council and the new mayor to move forward, but there's so many questions from the past. It's absolutely true, Brendan. It's, it's hard for her, me to imagine that she could think that town, the town council and the new mayor could just move on clean uh, and make a clean break from the past administration, given that there's so many unknowns. What is, uh, is there a different atmosphere when uh, covering the uh, town council and the new mayor? Is, uh, I mean, it's you know, not a cloak of darkness, I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> is, is it a lot easier? It's, it's easier. Um, you know, I have a lot of respect for Mayor Clark, and I, I, think, uh, I think very highly of her. Uh, but you, one cannot deny that there is a new air hanging about town hall these days. An air of openness, it seems like the mayor is trying to express to uh, citizens of the town. And it seems like the, the citizens of the town and the politically active are open to that and excited about that. Charlie Morrison with the James Island Messenger. Stay with us. We're coming back with more on questionable spending being investigated in James Island Town Hall. You're watching the Savage Report on Comcast C2, all local, all the time. Welcome back to the Savage Report. I'm Brendan Clark sitting in for Andy Savage. Our topic, thousands of dollars were spent by James Island Town Hall in the weeks before former Mayor Mary Clark left office in August. And now the new mayor and council are investigating. We're here with James Island Messenger reporter Charlie Morrison. And we're going to pick it up with the historic preservation committee that we reported on last spring. Charlie, tell us what it is and why the spending on this committee was so controversial. Yeah, the, uh, the Histor uh, Historic Preservation Committee was basically something created by former Mayor Mary Clark and headed up by her with the uh, non-stated goal of building up and supporting the 150th anniversary of the first shot of the Civil War, the sesquicentennial commemoration. Uh, it was something created by Mayor Clark uh, to kind of bring James Island something beyond roads and ditches, she oftentimes said. She wanted to create something for the town that was bigger than everyday business. So she created it and funded it, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think some of the projects that were started by Mayor Clark are going to be uh, seen to, through to fruition. Excuse me. So there was going to be a movie made, a film we made, as we understand, but how can you justify spending that money, allotting that money when the roads in James Island are in need of repair and ditches and everything that she says we didn't need to pay attention to? Well, you know, that's, it's, there's a lot of gray area there, Brennan. Um, you know, depending on who you ask, the roads were in passable shape. Depending on who you talk to, the ditches were cleaned and maintained regularly. Uh, but again, as I said, uh, former Mayor Clark very much wanted to give the town of James Island something beyond itself, so to speak, something that the national press and national uh, media would get grab a hold to and say, look, this is the place where it all started, and it's something we deserve to commemorate. Now, whether or not you believe that is up to you. Has anyone seen this film? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. Perhaps uh, Mayor Clark has seen it. I, 
I, do, I don't believe it's actually come, uh, come through all the way and, and been completed. I believe it was in the process of being produced right now. We're talking about uh, all this money, uh, controversial money spent. When this town, James Island, doesn't even have a budget right now, is that the first and foremost subject that they need to tackle right now, the new mayor and the new council? Yeah, it is. And I think if you attended any of the debates or spoke to any of the mayoral candidates leading up to the August election, they would have told you that was the number one issue. Uh, the budget basically couldn't, mayor and council could not see eye to eye on how to, uh, how to account and allocate for certain line items in the budget. And thus, it was pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and unfortunately never completed. Now, the town can operate on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, it's a little bit more time-consuming at meetings, and it's a lot more difficult to do, but it can happen. Uh, the question is, how much emphasis is the new mayor and council going to put on it? And the early results say that uh, quite a bit of emphasis. Yeah, they even have workshops on it, I believe. Uh, do we have a timeline of when this needs to get done, when it should get done, or it should already have been done? Well, uh, yeah, Brennan, at the last meeting of council, which I believe was on the uh, 7th of this month, uh, the mayor introduced a new uh, budget that he had worked himself, uh, being an accounting uh, professor at the Citadel, had some background with doing something like that. So he put one together and introduced it to council. Unfortunately, he only introduced it to council a day before the meeting, and they didn't feel they had the requisite time to really plow through it and, and understand it in, in an intimate basis. Now, the next meeting of council is on September 21st, and there will be a first reading of the budget then to be followed by a public hearing and perhaps a passage in early October, giving the town a budget and something to fall back on and uh, lean on in the times ahead. Another big subject, of course, is the court case for incorporation coming up. James on forming, falling apart, kind of going back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, could these recent problems that we've been talking about throughout the show hurt their cause? Yeah, I, I think they could. Uh, but then again, the district court judge in this, uh, that's ruling on the case has never been overturned. Um, I think the town's got a good chance of, of up being upheld this time as far as the incorporation goes. But... I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it, it might not affect things, the fact that there's some controversy still swirling and a lot of gray area to do with the finances and other, other things related to the town. So it's, it's certainly possible, Brennan. Do we know when that decision will be made? Do we know when, that, when the court case and decisions like that will be made? Timeline there? Yeah, we don't have a, a final uh, you know, day or even month yeah. on when to expect it. But uh, I believe it's going to come before next spring. So uh, in the next six months, I believe we're going to know whether or not this this third incorporation of the town is going to be upheld by the court system and be able to live to fight another day. You know, we've talked about all this uh, uh, spending of the Chamber of Commerce there that goes to uh, the former mayor, Mary Clark's daughter, the prepaid in advance money to the son uh, about this history and preservation committee. Is there an auditor uh, over there in James Island that uh, has control over all this, that sees these numbers? Yes, yes, there is. And actually, I believe they just went through an audit uh, in the past month, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure that audit's been completed and given back to the mayor. In fact, I know it, it hasn't because I know it, with this new mayor, it'd be in our hands. Uh, so, yeah, the audit will be done and will be completed and will be turned over to the public, and we will have a much better idea on exactly what went down. All right, Charlie Morrison with the James Island Messenger. Thanks so much for coming by. Very good information there. We look forward to more of your coverage on this developing story, of course. And when we come back, an evening soiree to help teen parents you're watching this average report on Comcast C2, all local, all the time.